Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing the Emily Norris brand new mum tag. I love doing these tags. I just love them. I love watching other mums do them as well. So yeah, I can't wait to get stuck in. So Emily's created it and she's come up with 15 really good questions for mums to answer. So I'm going to give it a go. So let's get straight in with it. Question number one is, what is your favourite mum hack? So my favourite mum hack, I actually did a video all about how to entertain a two year old, a toddler and mum hack. So I'll leave that link below if you want to go and check it out. I think it changes when they get older and stuff and yeah, I think what, no matter what stage they're at, I think the hack can change, your favourite hack can change. But at the moment I'm loving edible paint. So you make your own paint. So you get natural yoghurt and you add in some flavour colouring and that's it. And then you get yourself a paintbrush, a bit of paper, and then your child can paint and stuff like that. And you don't have to worry if they eat it because it's nothing in it at all that can harm them. So that's a really good hack from me to you is edible paint. Question number two is what is your most embarrassing mum moment? So my most embarrassing moment, there's so many, isn't there? there? There are so many, but I think one that is stuck in my mind recently, ever goes through a stage where he just really favours certain fruits I'm sure most toddlers do that but at that moment in time and from now as well he is obsessed with apples and there was a time when he couldn't eat the skin and it made him feel a little bit sick and I didn't know this at the time so I'm walking around Aldi doing my food shop and I've given him an apple out of the bag he's seen an apple on the shelf he's gone crazy and wanted it so I've given him the apple and um all of a sudden he starts like gagging. He's not choking, but I think the skin like just irritated him. The apple skin irritated his throat. And then he threw up like everywhere. And it's gone all over me. When I, it's not just a tiny bit of sick. It was a lot of sick. It went all down me, all down my trousers, all down my coat, my shoes. It went all over him, all over my hands because I was holding onto the handlebar, like pushing him round all over the floor. I had no wipes on me either. I thought it was just going to be a really quick Audi trip. I had nothing to clean it up with and I just had to use my hands. I was like doing this and I stunk of sick and... I'm walking around Audi and I keep looking across and then someone came and cleaned it up. I really should have said, but I did look around for a staff member, but I couldn't see anyone. I didn't really want to be in there any longer than I needed to be. So I just kind of just like ran away and I left the puddle on the floor. I did feel bad for leaving it, but there's nobody there and somebody did tend to it quite quickly. Question number three is what part of your day do you love the most? When he goes to bed? I'm joking. I'm joking. Um... Part of my day that I love the most, it has to be when Ryan comes home from work and I see the boys together and then they play and they like, you know, rough play, a little tumble and stuff on the floor and I love that and I'm literally doing dinner at that point, I'm cleaning up the chaos from during the day and then Ryan will take him off my hands and they play together and that's really lovely to see and I just, I love that, that's definitely my favourite part of the day. Question number four is what part of the day do you like the least? That probably has to be that time when it's about four to five o'clock. It's getting towards dinner time. He's getting tired. I'm getting tired. And I've got him on my ankle, nagging me for food, nagging me for snacks. And I'm saying, no, no, I'm doing dinner, I'm doing dinner. And it's that point is when he's screaming for snacks, screaming for my attention, but I can't give it to him because I've got to do dinner. And then I'm like, Ryan, take him off my hands. So it's that point, it's that manic hour before dinner and then, yeah, it's that point I think is my least favourite of the day. So question number five is, what is the worst thing somebody said to you when you were pregnant? Nothing's coming to my mind with this one. Maybe somebody did say something to me and I didn't really take much notice, I don't know. Um, but there was, maybe there was one thing actually, or it happened a couple of times but it doesn't bother me but, and I would say it was the worst thing that anyone has ever said to me because it's not. But I remember when you started to feel that horrible groggy feeling and you just feel a little bit bleh, and it's a sickness is starting to come about and you're getting tired and yeah. Um, so it was that stage and I was just saying how crappy I was feeling and stuff. And yeah, the person turned around and said, well, it's only going to get worse. Why don't you give birth? And you think that's bad. Why don't you give birth? And just, you know, just making you feel that what you was feeling wasn't bad enough. 
you know i'm just thinking well i'm not there yet and i will deal with that when i get there but right now this is how i'm feeling this is all i can see this is all i can deal with so one step at a time sort of thing and yeah no matter what you was feeling there was worse to come and of course getting called fat you know all right fatty and I'm just like hmm don't call people fat when they're pregnant don't just don't go there if you do you're a very brave person <laughs> question number six i love this question what baby name did you not agree on i laugh at this because ryan is terrible when it comes to baby names i would throw so many his way no 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 he'd shut it down every time a lot of people might think i'm a bit of a psycho now but i knew even before we decided to have children to start a family i knew if i had a boy he was going to be called edward i knew that i just knew that and ryan i made that very clear to ryan very early days and yeah he, he didn't run away he wasn't scared but when i first put edward his way he didn't like it but then it really grew on him but the one name that i think he did not like i love but he hated i love the name cameron for a boy and he hated it so much he just didn't look like it at all and yeah i think that's the name that we really did not agree on question number seven is did you co-sleep we didn't i decided not to co-sleep only because i just wanted him to be in his own bed as soon as possible for routine reasons and i just find co-sleeping it it won't be it'll be harder to get him into a good solid routine especially if ryan and i come sneaking into bed when the baby's already in the bed and i just I could just see it not working. Ryan is a fireman, so if his alerter went off, that alerter would wake that baby up. It wakes probably the whole street up. It's so loud, and I know it would just wake the baby up if the baby was sleeping next to us, and I'd be up then at God knows how many times a night trying to get that baby back to sleep, and it just it wouldn't it just wouldn't work our lifestyle out, you know. And call me selfish, I like my space. I like being next to my husband at night i don't know call me selfish but that's the reason why we didn't co-sleep when edward does get sick though when he's poorly ryan's on the sofa edward's in the bed with me um so it's never like oh i'm never co-sleeping but early days and on a day-to-day -day basis we don't and we're going to continue not to question number eight something that you bought but you never used so the thing that i bought and never used was the angel care nappy bin never used that if i did this is going to sound really disgusting. If I did use it, I'd leave those nappies in there for months and I'd forget they're in there. And then I'm like, oh my God, I've got to clean that out. I forgot to put nappies in it. I just, I, I didn't use it. I honestly didn't use it and yeah, won't be getting a bin again. Question number nine is three hospital bag must-haves. So I would recommend bringing your own milk formula. Um, that's a must have for me if even if you're planning to breastfeed I would bring your own milk anyway in case something happens in case you aren't able to breastfeed like what happened to me um, yeah I won't go into detail about it but just in case it doesn't go your way or go to plan then have a backup so that is yeah I would really really recommend bringing a backup of food of course you need your lovely sleep suits ones with the um, built-in scratch mittens they're definitely the best ones because they just have really long sharp nails with newborns and they like scratch their face and stuff also i would also put in a nail file um because a lot of people worry about getting clippers and so many people clip their baby's fingers i did it and it was the worst feeling ever and i just cried on the spot when i knew i caught his finger so if you file them yeah it's a lot easier you're not going to hurt them so definitely get a nail file in your grooming kit so question number 10 is are you a routine mum or a go with a flow mum and what does your bedtime look like so i'm a definite routine mum definitely i'm very strict on the routine so what our bedtime routine looks like i've actually made a video on that as well so i'll leave the bedtime routine linked below but what we usually do is we do dinner about half past five, six, and then Edward will be playing around and then about seven, quarter past, so I stick him in the bath and we brush his teeth and give him a good old scrub. I then take him into our room and read to him and put his pyjamas on and cream him up and stuff like that. And 
then I just carry him into his bedroom, have a little cuddle, a little sway, and then I put him into his bed, and that's it. That is our bedtime routine. It's, it doesn't take us too long, to be fair, and he is a really good sleeper. I put him down, and we don't usually hear a peep from him until the morning, so yeah, we're quite lucky with him. And then Ryan and I have the whole evening to ourselves, so yeah, we're very lucky with that. Question number 11, what type of labour did you have, and what pain relief did you choose? So my labour was pretty horrific, it was quite long, it was like 53 hours I think from start to finish. Definitely not what I had planned um, and yeah I had to be induced, even though my waters broke but they broke at the top so there was only trickling out and that's what caused my contractions to come very like here there and everywhere and not consistent. Um, whereas if he was to rupture the bag below then that's when you get your gush but because it was at the top I just have water like trickling out. So yeah, so then I had to get induced and being induced isn't pleasant, it's really not pleasant. Uh, yeah, I was in a lot of pain through all of that. A lot of pulling and tugging of your cervix. So then I was given gas and air and um, yeah, as soon as I got given that my life was fab. I was laughing, joking with Ryan, I was walking around more. But then I think my body got kind of used to it or maybe I dilated more. But yeah, then the pain came back a lot more. So then once I was good four, five centimetres, I then had an epidural and then that's when life was brilliant. Um, it then stopped working on one side. So I had like lean and it had to drain onto one side as well. Also my contractions were coming through the epidural. So I had to, and I could feel my pain, I could feel the pain straight through the epidural as well. So then I had to get a super duper strong one. And yeah, Edward then, I was pushing him out, he was fine, and then all of a sudden he decided to wiggle back up, and that was the worst part of my labour. He was, his head was out, but then he moved like that, he wiggled back up, and I literally felt like somebody was snapping my spine in my lower back in half, it felt horrific, and I then there was that point I couldn't go on any longer, and then my contractions just stopped. And they pressed the alarm and loads of people came running in and they just yanked him out basically. And yeah, he had in the end shoulder dystocia. So his shoulder got stuck behind my butt, my pubic bone and he was like wedged and he couldn't get out. So yeah, that bit was quite, hor was quite horrific. And I think that's when he was then put into the incubator because I think he was in such a shock as well of the quick delivery. And yeah, and because my walls had been broken for quite a long time as well. Um, it being obviously over 50 hours, so he got an infection, so did I, so then he had to have antibiotics and ha needed help with his breathing, so he's put in the incubator and that's why I couldn't breastfeed. So yeah, so it wasn't the labour of my dreams, it did not go the way I wanted it to. I wanted a birth pool, I didn't even see a birth pool, I didn't even get in the bath, I didn't have any water at all, what I wanted, but you can't think like that, oh I'm upset because he didn't go the way I wanted to. At the end of the day, the midwife's done an amazing job bringing your baby into the world. Your baby's healthy, your baby's with you, so that's all that matters. So yeah, it didn't go the way I wanted it to, but it's life, isn't it? It's life. Question number 12 is, have you ever been mum shamed? Um, nothing comes to my mind, but of course there's the odd mum that does question what you do and why you're doing it and why you doing that this time and why is he not doing that that time or you know you're proud of what your child's achieved and then you get another mum going oh we've been doing that for this amount of time and you're just like you know when parents compare their child to yours you know you it makes you think oh what's wrong with my child you shouldn't be made to think that ever so yeah, I think that's the only thing really that comes to my mind. Question number 13 is the biggest challenges you face since becoming a mum? Oh, there's so many. <laughs> um, there's so many different ones, isn't there? Biggest challenges. Right, this is going to sound super selfish. So selfish. And even I think it sometimes I think, Jess, stop being silly. But it's silly things. Like when it's Christmas, when it's your birthday, when it's a holiday so during this time people who don't have kids do a lot to celebrate this so they go out on date night with their other half they spend the day doing whatever they want you know they some people take the day off work and yeah if you're a parent you nothing changes for you at all it's your birthday sorry still got a kid to look after or you don't oh you don't feel well you're sick today 
sorry. You got a kid to look after. You're hungover. You got a kid to look after. You're on holiday. You still got a kid to look after. No matter what day it is, it could be your wedding day. No matter what day it is, you still have a child to look after. And no one can tell you that until you have a child. People can tell you, oh, it's all gonna change. And I was that naive mum going, my life won't change. I just, you know, that child just gets slotted in. You know, it's fine, plenty of room. Come on in. My life won't change. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> Question number 14. The best bit of advice that you've ever been given and biggest piece of, of advice you'd give to a new mum. As silly as it sounds, just this tiny sentence just makes me feel better sometimes. Every child is different and it's so true. It is so, so true. You're worried about if you have a second baby or what if the labour is going to be bad again or what if I have a challenging child again. No child is the same. Every child's different. And that is so reassuring. It just relaxes you a little bit. So what if your child's not talking as much as your friend's baby? So what if your child's not walking as quickly as your other friend's baby? You know, every child's different. Just remember that. Every child is different and they will get there in their own time. So my biggest piece of advice that I'll give to a new mum, other than don't compare yourself to other people, don't beat yourself up if your day doesn't go to plan but other than all of that that I'm sure you will hear in lots of these tags and stuff but my honesty my biggest piece of, of advice would be to not forget who you are it sounds cheesy and it sounds so silly but you really do forget who you are when you have a child you are just mum you are the feeder you are the bum wiper you are the sick cleaner you are everything apart from you yourself basically and I think remembering who you are and taking time to do what you want to do is so bloody important. I've expressed this so much over on Instagram. You are so important. Your child is so important to you, but you are so important to them. And I just think, you know, you have to treat yourself the way how you do your child. Not physically, you know, but you know what I mean. You are also important. Go and have a lovely hot bath. When you get someone to look after your child, go for a bath. Go and have a nap. Just do something that is going to benefit you and make you feel better. Happy mum, happy baby, as they say. So honestly, don't worry about the house. I what the house is a mess. Who gives a shit? No one does. Make sure you're doing what makes you happy. If cleaning your house makes you happy and it'll make you feel better, then do it. If going for a walk on your own just for 10 minutes while someone has the baby, do it. Going out clubbing with your friends, do it. I do that. I go most Friday nights and I love it. It's great fun. But just do what makes you happy. And I that is my biggest bit of advice is to not forget who you are and live your life still you're not just a mum you know you are you you are still you the last question is who's your mum crush and who do i tag to do this tag so my mum crush this i have so many emily norris is by far my number one mum crush she always has been my absolutely lovely friend sammy sammy bird i love her so bloody much i've got so much time for her she is just the real the most real person i've ever come across yeah sammy i tag you to do this i also tag my lovely friend courtney i love courtney she is so beautiful and her body is just insane and i also tag juliet from being mrs dudley i love her i came across her over on instagram and she's literally had she's got me hooked so she's amazing as well and i'd love to see her do this tag too so they are my three mum crushes at the moment and there's so many of course there's so many mum crushes that i have i just love most mums on here to be honest because i think you just appreciate mums and everything that they do and as soon as you become a mum you just respect other mums so much more that is the mum tag i really hope you enjoyed it thank you to emily for creating it. it's a great mum tag thank you so much for watching if you're new here please hit that subscribe button and give it a thumbs up if you liked it thanks for watching and i'll see you guys very soon bye